trying to supercars. And many come to see the man who's dominated this year's British Rallycross Championship, Will Gollop. But he wasn't having it all his own way. In a fantastic early heat, Gollop's Peugeot was beaten off the line by the Metro 6R4 of Rob Gibson. Although a brilliant driver, Gibson races on a shoestring, lacking the sponsorship that Gollop has. And with the coffers almost empty at the end of a hard season, he needed a high-profile win and a bit of prize money, and he wasn't about to give up that lead easily. Gollop first tried to drive around him, but Gibson was having none of it. Next time around, Gollop tried to barge through on the inside, but Gibson shut the door. In this sort of form, I don't think Michael Schumacher in thrust could have overtaken Gibson. A richly deserved win for Rob Gibson. But in the next heat, everything went very wrong for Rob when his 6R4's engine blew a head gasket. Gollop's other big rival, Barry Squibb, wasn't enjoying his day out either. His car had turned into a smoke machine with a major oil leak. Gollop seemed almost as upset as Squibb. I want to see him there and have a good race with him. I mean, Barry's nearly always good fun to race with. <laughs> um, we have had our ups and downs in the past, but I'm sure, uh, you know, if we get together in the final, it'll be a good show. I said earlier that the Super Prix wasn't a championship event. I was fibbing, sort of. The Euro 2000 boys were there, having decided to run the last round of their championship at Lydon. The heats were dominated by one driver, Dutchman Patrick Van Mecklen. Before a lap was up, he'd built up a massive lead, his car sounding absolutely spot on. Patrick was obviously relishing the opportunity to let rip on Lydon's wide open spaces. Uh, it's a lovely circuit. Uh, in Belgium, the circuits are smaller, and here we come uh, yeah, flat out at uh, fifth gear, so it's, uh, it's a real rally cross. The rate of attrition in Euro 2000 was even worse than in supercars and more spectacular. Watch the yellow car. Unsurprisingly, this meant game over for Chris Bellamy. Basically, I caught the kerb on the inside, too much grip, and I wish he went. I couldn't turn out because mate in the escort was there, and that was it. I'd got nowhere to go, so I wish he went. But you hit the escort anyway. I hit him once I was in mid flight, I couldn't do a thing about it. I think he's rather miffed about it, but I mean, there's, there's no I could do, so. One of them things, I'm afraid. Although not everyone behaved as acrobatically as Chris Bellamy, there was loads of action in the other classes. One of the stars of the lower orders was Barry Rogers from Devon, who was unstoppable in his blue mini. Already champion in the up to 1400cc class, he tore apart his division with some spectacular driving and quite rightly won himself a place in the D-final. Mike Turpin was also having a rather good day. His driving couldn't be faulted. So far it's gone well, but uh, the finals are the ones that count really. So we'll just have to see how it goes now. It's the next few races that uh, are the important ones. So, on to the finals. First up was the Euro 2000s, and surprise, surprise, Van Mecklen led from the start. As the pack fought it out, he moved clear and started to build a rather big lead. But round Chesham's drift, he was way too wide and into the really rough stuff, allowing Paul Gosling through on the inside. But Mecklen wasn't about to give up, though, and tried to use his power to get around the outside of Gosling's Fiesta. But Gosling kept his line, and Van Mecklen had to back off. 
So Gosling celebrated a hard-earned victory, but second place would still be good enough to earn Van Mecklen the Euro 2000 Championship title. In the D final, Barry Rogers started right from the back of the grid. Then, having battled through to third, he slipped inside Kieran Pierce's Fiesta to take second place behind his brother Gordon. Then on the next lap, he performed exactly the same manoeuvre on his brother and held on to win the final. This gave him an automatic place in the C final, but this time around the competition was just too powerful and he made no impact at all. At the start of the B final, Turpin shot off the second row of the grid into the lead on the first bend, only to drift wide and drop back into the pack. Some hard driving over the next couple of laps got him back into second, and then on the last lap, he stole first position and his place in the A final. Gibson made it to the grid of the A final and joined Gollop and Maloney on the front row, but Barry Squibb had already taken his broken car home. Any chance of a Gollop Gibson battle evaporated as Gibson's tardiness off the line made it clear that the 6R4 was still very poorly. Gollop began to build a big lead, and when Gibson retired, all chance of an exciting finale had disappeared. But then on the penultimate lap, Gollop hit a curb way too hard, punctured a tyre, and damaged a drive shaft. He soldiered on, but Irishman John Maloney reeled him in. Although Gollop defended doggedly, his car had definitely had enough, and Maloney shot through to take an unexpected but very welcome victory. Oh, and Turpin came up trumps with a third place. Absolutely over the moon. There was a certain amount of luck attached to it. Um, Will, I think, was a puncture, but uh, he was walking away with it, and uh, we got the break. And uh, rally cross goals like that, I've had my good times and my bad times.